if you supported the disaster prediction app on Kickstarter and are due to get a beta version of the app, it's time. Keep an eye on your email today as you'll be getting to select which platform to receive the app. Only Apple and Android are ready to go right now. But that email is how you get the app process started. We expect a 20-day beta period, then it will be available for everyone. Now, for today's news. Good morning, folks. Indeed, the last five magnitude 6 and higher earthquakes that have struck this planet have hit areas directly put on alert in the map most recently posted before the earthquake occurred. For years, the sun told us when to watch, and now the earth is telling us where. In today's news, we'll see an amazing paper quantifying how scary some solar flares can be. Luckily, there isn't much of that brand of space weather to be seen as we go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star. Coronal holes boiling a bit, but no eruptions and no solar flare flashes. There aren't even any sunspots. Solar wind is yet to have its ramp up in intensity, even though the phi angle shift is set in. Impact expected soon as we finally had 24 hours without any KP0 cosmic ray health alerts. The calm will be broken when the solar wind from this coronal hole arrives tonight or tomorrow. As it faced Earth yesterday, of course, we were eyeing another big earthquake. You saw it at the start of this video. A magnitude 6.4 struck Argentina yesterday in the inland faults isolated through Bolivia and Argentina, as opposed to our coastal alerts, which usually hug the red fault lines offshore. This quake struck on top of where the red line ran down along the spine of the Andes. It is also noteworthy that Dasher, Donner, and Vixen hit Santa's workshop with CERN, Harp, and Vanilla ice cream due to a contract dispute. Moving on. One of the most exciting papers I've read in a while, just how bad a solar flare can be in terms of speed of the CME produced and the solar proton radiation storms. They've examined upper limits for X10, X100, and X1000 solar flares. Turns out that while we normally stay around 300 to 800 kilometers per second in solar wind speed, including the faster streams, X10s can produce solar wind and CMEs in the thousands of kilometers per second. Nothing like that's happened in a while. Moving down, however, if we get a really bad solar proton event from an X-10, it could actually affect the surface enhancements in dangerous ways. At X-100, every airline passenger is at major risk along with much of the people on the ground, and above that, it's a planet killer. We do know that sun-like stars are capable of X-100s, but probably not X-1000s. Folks, it was a long weekend, but a fun one. That's my wife Kat and I at the Discovery Festival in New Mexico where a few thousand kids came and learned about the sun and how to predict earthquakes. They had Tesla machines, Virgin Galactic was there, drones flying everywhere. It was interesting. Anyway, if you have kids in your life, you can't imagine how much they will actually enjoy learning when it's solar flares bigger than our whole planet and how to forecast the movement of the tectonic plates. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.